Are you ready to be spooked? Brace yourself as we take you back in time to one of the most horrific incidents in American religious history, which still sends shivers down the spine of many. It's been almost 30 years since the bloody end of the infamous siege between the FBI and members of the Branch Davidian Religious Group in Waco, Texas. Now, a new documentary has premiered on Netflix, which sheds light on the disturbing events that unfolded during the siege, bringing to life the chilling tale of a maniacal, an apocalypse-minded cult leader, David Koresh, and the tragic fate of his followers. Join us today on Spooked Nation as we dive deeper into the lurid story of Waco, a tale of mind control, power, and the ultimate sacrifice. The story of Branch Davidians is one of a religious movement turned cult that believed in the end of the world as prophesized in the Bible. Led by a series of leaders including Benjamin and Lois Roden, the group took control of the Davidian compound at Mount Carmel in Waco, Texas. After Benjamin's death, the power struggle continued with Lois until David Koresh joined the group in 1981 and rose in favor, but tensions mounted when Koresh's claims of miraculous abilities were challenged by George Roden leading to a gruesome incident of exhuming a body. Koresh's attempt to report Rodin's actions to the police only worsened the situation, leading to a takeover of Mount Carmel by Rodin after Lois' death. The first siege of Waco took place in November 1987, when David Koresh tried to gather evidence to lock up George Rodin and take control of Mount Carmel. A fierce battle ensued, with bullets flying before law enforcement finally arrived to apprehend the men. Surprisingly, Koresh walked away a free man while Rodin was jailed for contempt of court, setting the stage for Koresh to take control of the branch of Davidians. David Koresh's claims of being a prophet and the Messiah were central to his leadership of the branch Davidians, and he used the Book of Revelation to bolster his image among his followers. But beyond that, he also enforced strict rules on sexual relations within the group. Koresh handpicked wives from among the female members and forbade his male followers from having sexual relations with their partners. The Netflix docu-series also sheds light on the disturbing fact that Koresh engaged in sexual relations with girls as young as 12 years old. While some of the group's female members saw it as a way to be closer with God, this aspect of the group's behavior is undoubtedly one of the most unsettling aspects of the tragedy that unfolded at Mount Carmel. The Branch Davidians were no strangers to guns and firearms, dealing with them legally and easily accessible to members. Months before the tragic siege, the ATF had been keeping an eye on the group and had placed an undercover agent within. After a report on the group's child abuse and gun stockpiling, the ATF decided to conduct a surprise raid. Unfortunately, the group was tipped off and the ATF proceeded with the raid without giving much thought, leading to disastrous consequences. The tension between the Branch Davidians and the ATF had been building up for months before the deadly siege at Waco. When the ATF raided the Mount Carmel compound, the Branch Davidians prepared for the worst and stood their ground. The initial talks between Koresh and the ATF broke down quickly, and soon gunfire broke out on both sides. The violence claimed the lives of four ATF agents and six Branch Davidians with many more injured. The FBI took over negotiations and managed to release some women and children. But the situation deteriorated again when Koresh went back on his word. Over the next few days, more Branch Davidians came out of the compound, but the situation remained volatile. One aspect that was notable during the negotiation process was the disconnect between the FBI's hostage rescue team and the negotiators who were in communication with the Branch Davidians. The negotiators' testimonies in Waco, American Apocalypse revealed that the HRT frequently acted in opposition to their suggestions. This caused Koresh to lose faith in the negotiation process, which had initially resulted in some success, with several cult members leaving the compound. In an attempt to force a surrender, the FBI resorted to a range of tactics, including blasting loud music and distressing sounds at the compound. The use of tanks and hundreds of law enforcement officers only added to the escalating tension at Waco. By April 14, 1993, the FBI's negotiations with Koresh were faltering, and Koresh had reneged on his surrender promises. He instead asked for time to write a manuscript containing holy teachings. The FBI sought permission to use tear gas to force the Branch Davidians to surrender, and the attack was launched on April 19th. Soon, a fire erupted at the compound, engulfing it in flames. The fire's cause is disputed, with some claiming the FBI started it, while others claim that the Branch Davidians discussed it. The fire destroyed the compound, and many women, men, and children perished in the blaze. 
The whole debacle was broadcasted live on television news as the country witnessed the fateful climax of the 51-day-long siege. The Waco siege remains a controversial topic, with mistakes acknowledged on both sides. After almost 30 years, Netflix's Waco, American Apocalypse seeks to revive memories of the event that shook America. The docuseries attempts to humanize both parties, showing how each believed their actions were justified. While some details were left out, it provides an opportunity for members of both sides to share their terrifying experiences of the apocalypse that took place in Waco. And that's all for today. Subscribe to our channel for more videos like this.